As you're being seated, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 28. Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 28. And as always, we desire to worship the Lord in the way that he desires to be worshipped. Amen? And there's no better way to do that than to look into God's word to consider how we ought to worship him. And this morning we'll be looking at Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 28. And it reads, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this rite as a statute for you and for your sons forever. And when you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Then the people of Israel went and did so. As the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Amen. If we're not careful, it can be easy to lose sight here of who's righteous and who is unrighteous. And some people, they'll easily boil down their thoughts to this. They'll look at Israel and Egypt and they'll see Israel good, Egypt bad. Israel righteous, Egypt unrighteous. You had big bad Egypt oppressing little old good, inherently good Israel, inherently righteous Israel. But Israel isn't inherently good, not by any means. And if they were inherently good, they wouldn't need a Passover lamb, would they? They wouldn't need the blood of a lamb painted on the doorposts and lintels of their doorways. Instead, what we see here is God has shown Israel favor. God has shown Israel great favor. There's nothing in Israel here to commend them to God, except God himself having chosen them. And in this favor, God has given Israel the Passover. They were to select a spotless lamb, a lamb that is without blemish and without spot. And the blood, this lamb was to be killed. The blood from this lamb was to be painted on the doorposts and on the top lintel of the doorway of each Israelite's house. And the Israelites were to eat this, eat this lamb that night and to burn whatever was left when they were done. They were to keep their sandals on their feet, staff in hand. They were only to eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs with this lamb. They were planning for a hasty exit. And the way God fashioned this, he, 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 was, he was going to look and see the blood of this lamb on the doorway and he said that he will see it and he will pass over their houses when he came in judgment upon the Egyptians. And you see that God, God, God is the one who delivers Israel here. If they had not put the blood of this lamb on the doorway, they would receive the same judgment that Egypt would receive from God's hand. 
Israel is not righteous. Israel has received favor. And Israel has no boasting that they can do. They can't say that they planned this out. They can't say that there was something inherently good within them. In fact, even to this point, they have displayed the seeds of much of the rebellion that they will show going forward, even in the way that they treated Moses when he came to them. And God had told Israel in this command for the Passover that they were to remember this, and they were to remember this in worship. He told them beforehand, before he delivered them, that they're going to celebrate this as a holiday for years to come. Every year they were commanded to remember the Lord and worship of his deliverance. Now think of Israel and think of Egypt and think of the Passover lamb. Which one of those is righteous? It's the Passover lamb that is righteous. Now consider us. Have we not received God's favor in Passover? We have Christ, the spotless lamb. Christ, who is without blemish and without spot. And not only is Christ spotless and without blemish, he has every bit of righteousness, every bit of good deed that was required from him, he has done. His blood was shed for us on the cross. And God the Father saw the blood of Christ and he passed over you if you're a genuine believer. He passed over you in judgment. And just like Israel, we have no boasting, no boasting at all that we can, we can make before God. We cannot say that we are saved because we made a decision. We cannot say that we are saved and we have been passed over because we have prayed a prayer or because we have done some sort of religious rite or some good idea or some method of planning that we have put together. Just like Israel, if you're a genuine Christian, God has delivered you in your sin. He delivered you and there was nothing that you can do to deliver yourself. And just like Israel was commanded to worship the Lord after being delivered in the Exodus, we are commanded to worship our Lord. In fact, one day we will worship in the innumerable multitude. And what is the innumerable multitude in Revelation chapter seven? Who do they praise? The, they praise God and the lamb, the lamb who was slain, the Passover lamb, our savior, Jesus Christ. So my brethren, I want to exhort you to worship your Passover lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was spotless and righteous for your sake, the one whose blood was shed for your sake, the one who without him, there would be no deliverance for you. You would receive the judgment that the rest of the world would receive. So let's worship him and let's take joy in our, our union with him. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we praise you for sending your son our Lord Jesus Christ, the final Passover lamb, the real Passover lamb, the one that Israel's lambs pointed to. And we, we praise you for him. We thank you that his blood was shed for us. May his praises be continually upon our lips. May we never cease to speak of him. May we never cease to rejoice in him. May we love him with all of our hearts. Who of us, Lord, would be here but for him? So we praise you and we ask you, Lord, to help us as we worship. May the thought 
of our Passover lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, well up such rejoicing in our hearts that it cannot be measured. And we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.